is appointed receiver of all of the property, real and personal, things in action and effects of defendant city corporation held by and vested in defendants or in or to which defendant may be in any wise interested or entitled thereto. Plaintiff, the people of the state of whatever, that's us, state of Michigan, shall recover of defendant corporation, whatever city of, the sum of damages, real and personal, got me? They don't like that when you start talking that because they can go 100 million three times that amount in punitive damages, they get a little upset. As costs and disbursements of this action and the receivers is directed to pay this sum out of their pocket to whoever the attorney general, but you can have a person stipulated on there as an injured party. Now you put down there the honorable judge so-and-so presiding, the date entered, and you, you, he signs that, and that city is no longer a city. You see, when they violate your constitution, this is one of the most powerful tools that you can use. And when you jam this on, you better wear a bulletproof vest to court, because you're probably going to get shot at by the time you get home. But it's nice to threaten. You know, you just threaten. Just drop one of them in the mail and say, if I don't get reasonable cause for my action in the near future, you're going to get one of these in the mail for real. Here is a summons for Coaranto. This is for the start of the thing. Right here. Summons. Form 41. By the way, you can get this in 21 AM jurisprudence forms and practice your practical and practical forms and practice all right you name the party you put down there who you are the people of the state of michigan versus you are summoned to appear before what's in which court on such and such a date to show by what authority you claim to have use and or enjoy the rights and liberties and franchise namely the corporation city of set out and complained of in such and such a time summons and further to do and receive all things which the court shall then order concerning you this is kind of like pulling their driver's license for drunk driving now that's an oversimplification but sometimes these city uh, halls operate like a drunken sailor and they just think they can abuse citizens rights and trash them the, you know who i am <laughs> No, and I don't care. <laughs> you know who I am? I'm your boss. I'm the people. You're elected to work for me. And I'm trying to be nice, so I'd appreciate it if you just, we can sit down and work this out. But if we can't work this out, I'm going to sock it to you, baby. You got me? And that's basically how I feel about it. Now, we can get into some of these other things. Right here. This is a very important point. I'm trying to get this across to people, and you try and tell them, and they kind of look at you with this blank, starey eyed look. But in the Constitution of the state of Michigan, the latest and greatest, the very first thing they talk about, notice it says Section 1. All political power is inherent in the people. Government is instituted for their equal benefit, security, and protection. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you feel equal benefit? I don't. You know, equal protection and discrimination. No person shall be denied the equal protection of the laws, right? Nor shall any person be denied the enjoyment of the civil or political rights or be discriminated against in the exercise thereof because of religion, race, color, or national origin. The legislature shall implement this section by appropriate legislation, you know? And they start going down through all the freedom of worship, you know? I mean, <clears throat> this is what we're talking about here, folks. You know your rights, you got them. You don't know them, you don't got them. <clears throat> you get back in here to police powers generally. This is something you got to understand. Generally, the police power is the exercise of the sovereign right of the government to promote order, safety, and health and morals and the general welfare of the society within constitutional limits. Within constitutional limits. Did everybody hear that? Within constitutional limits. Generally, the police power is the exercise of the sovereign right of the government to promote order, safety, health, and moral, and general welfare of the society within the constitutional limits. As otherwise stated, the police power of the state is a power or organization of a system of regulations to foster the health, order, and comfort of the people and to prevent and or punish injuries and offenses to the public. Right? 
but it has to be within constitutional limitations, and it embraces all rules for the protection of life, liberty, and property. <laughs> I mean, that's a contradiction of logic today, folks. That doesn't happen. You and I both know it. I mean, uh, who are they kidding? They ain't kidding me. Okay? So, it's up to you, and it's up to me. And we got to get a hold of this book right here. You get a hold of this Constitution, and you start learning that Constitution, and you quote a chapter and verse, and guess what? You'll notice a unique, different change. One, after a while, they start to listen. And you actually affect what is called positive change. And every time they see you, and that goofy hat you wear, they go, Oh, for God's sake, don't give that guy no ticket. I have actually been pulled over, listening to the, the program, didn't have no plates on my car. Policeman called. He says, you got positive ID on a guy? And a friend of mine was taping it off his police radio. He said, yeah, it's him. He said, well, for God's sake, don't give that guy no ticket. And the guy says, Sarge, he ain't got no plates on his car. He said, I don't give a damn what he ain't got on his car. Don't give that guy no ticket. He said, but Sarge, you told me he's just been waiting to fight it and beat it all the way to the Supreme Court. And I wrote that on the ticket. He says, you give that guy a ticket? I said, I just told you not to give that guy a ticket. What are you, deaf? You got some problem with your hearing? He said, I told you not to give that guy a ticket. Now, why did you give that guy a ticket? He said, Sarge, he ain't got no plates on the car. I said, I told you I don't care what he ain't got on the car. This is all recorded on a radio broadcast. So the, everybody was laughing. The police were laughing. Everybody was laughing. His buddies were laughing. They were ribbing him over the radio. The sergeant told him, all right, knock it off. Clear the net. This is serious. He said, uh, fine. He said, you give him a ticket? He says, fine. He says, tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I want you to be in here when the city attorney comes in here. And he says, you're going to personally deliver the ticket to him, and he ain't going to be real happy with you. Because he hates that guy. Every time he goes to court, that guy blows his doors off. He looks like a fool. You give the guy a ticket. Now he's got to go to court. So sure enough, we go to court. <clears throat> Come up before the court. Judge starts uh, operating like a prosecutor. He starts asking me all kind of discovery question. I call as soon as they call the case. Now this is something important. You got to understand. You're going to be your own attorney, then you got to know all of the programming. When you hear him call your case, you get off your tail feather and you run right up there as quick and expediently as possible without knocking anybody down, and you say, "Ready, Your Honor." You state your appearance. I'm so and so hearing before this honorable court. I am standing as my own counsel. In my state, it's under Article 1, Section 13. I've appointed myself my own attorney, and I'm ready to proceed with my administrative and procedural matters. And at this time, Your Honor, may it please the court, I motion for dismissal of prejudice, failure, state of cause of action, for which relief can be granted. Bingo. Now, I apologize if I'm talking too fast. I'm going to try and slow down a little bit. But when, you, when you're in court as much as I am, you just learn. You either talk fast or you lose. So I apologize if I'm going a little too fast. I'm going to slow down. I'm trying to make it easier for you folks, okay? But the judge... Bips off right away. Well, you got a ticket on such and such. I said, oh, Your Honor. I said, are you the judge, the disinterested third party that's trying this case? The trier of fact? He said, yes. I said, okay. I said, is this the prosecutor over here to my right? He said, yeah, that's him. I said, okay. I said, are you going to prosecute this case, Your Honor? He said, no, no, I'm the judge. I said, and why are you asking discovery questions? Well, I just want to find out what's going on. I says, isn't that his job over there? That's what he's supposed to do. He's supposed to present his case as the prosecutor, trier of the case. You're the trier of fact. He's the trier of the case. I said, if you're going to operate as the judge and the prosecutor, I'm going to object on the record as a mistrial. He said, okay, I'll let you enter that on the record. Go ahead. I said, okay, let it be entered on the record as an appealable issue. He said, okay. He said, now it's on the record. He said, let me ask you this. Did you get a ticket on September the 30th? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, let me ask you this. Do you have any plates on your car? I says, no, sir. And I don't intend to get any. And, of course, all the people in the court, oh, this guy's going to jail. Watch this. This is going to be good. He says to me, he says, I assume you have a very good reason for that. And I said, yes, sir. And I shut up. I waited. He said, can I hear it? <laughs> I said, well, Your Honor, I said, I'm an unfranchised common law free man. I'm not a participant in any tontine schemes of limited liability and a joint venture for profit with an insurable interest requiring me to participate in these corporate Ponzi schemes. I'm just a little Joe from Kokomo. I live on the block. I travel at the common law. And I have a right to travel freely and uncovered pursuant to Shapiro versus Thompson. And that right is so basic it doesn't even need to be mentioned. The state of Michigan arbitrarily and erroneously converted my right into a privilege and issued a license plate and a fee for it. 